Hello, this is a demo of the Windows RTools 4.0 development environment for Apache Arrow using VS Code. It's used to build and test the Arrow R package on Windows. I'll be showing you how to use the environment. If you want to set it up, I have written instructions in the associated blog post. However, in each part, I will reference the configuration files to control each piece of the functionality. Hopefully, that lets you modify it to fit your needs. To start, you can see here that I have the error repo checked out in VS Code. I've opened the five configuration files that we use. So first off, we have the batch script. This script prepends the RTools environment to the path so that VS Code can find the Mingo compiler tool chain. And then after some more environment variables, it'll launch VS Code in the arrow directory we have here. You can adjust this to wherever you happen to have checked out arrow. To sort of demo this, we can exit out of VS Code, and you'll see that I have the script on my desktop that makes it easy to open up whenever I need it. And I can double click and it'll open up VS Code with the correct environment already set up in the environment variables. The next piece is the settings.json. This provides the basic CMake configuration and also sets up the RTools bash the terminal integration. If we open up a terminal and look at this terminal menu, we can see that one of our options is the RTools 64-bit bash. This is useful if you want to access any of the command line tools available in RTools. For example, the Pacman package manager that we use to install the dependencies during setup. The third file is the CMake user presets JSON config. This defines the CMake config we'll use to build Arrow. I like to have a preset for each build, as well as a preset for common configuration. So here I have the user base, which is the common configuration, and then I have one specific to R on Windows. Two things to point out here. The first is that the build directory for each preset is a unique folder under the C++ build directory. So I built this earlier, and if you look in the file tree, you can see under the C++ build folder, there's one for user R debug windows, corresponding to our preset here. The second thing to point out is that if you want to change any of the arrow configuration, for example, if you wanted to enable Google Cloud Storage or turn on S3 or turn off anything, you would add the appropriate variable here. The variables that are on there are the ones that are listed here or that are inherited either from our user base here or from the configurations that are provided by the arrow package under C++ CMake presets.json. VS Code CMake plugin reads from these presets. So to configure, you need to tell VS Code which preset to build. You can do this by clicking in the lower left-hand corner and selecting the appropriate build config. So above here, these are all the ones that are provided by the arrow package. We want the one that's user defined, so that's user R debug windows. Like I mentioned before, I had already built this earlier, so I'm gonna go ahead for the sake of the demo now and clear away that build directory. You can also do this yourself. I often do it when I need to clear away stale configuration. Now to run the configure step, we can go into the CMake tab right here and under the three dots, click clean reconfigure all projects. The CMake output is gonna show up in this output tab. One really useful tip, you can always use control F even while it's running to search for specific variables. So for example, I can type in zlib to find all the steps that involve the zlib dependency and see what happens. Now for the tasks.json file. This file defines the two build tasks that we want VS Code to do. The first is the install C++R one, which builds the install target in the C++ code and installs libero. The second is the build R package, which runs R command install. To run either of these build tasks, you can hit Control shift b and it'll bring up a menu asking which build task you want to run. 
you can select up and down with the arrow keys and hit return on the one that you want. So we'll install the arrow of C++. Once we've compiled the C++, we can now build the R package with Control shift b and then select Builds R Package. Two things to notice about the build args in task.json. The first is that we're using the preclean argument, which clears away the C++ code so that it can be recompiled, so there's no caching. I usually like to keep this because I find that I need it more often than not, but you can always disable it by using control forward slash just to comment it out. There's also the no multi arch, which is a Windows specific configuration, and it just makes sure that it's only building for the 64 bit version and not the 64 and 32 bit version, since you only need the former to get things tested. Once the R package has been built successfully, you'll be able to see that down in the terminal, and then we can open up an R terminal and go ahead and use that. So I can do library arrow, and we can create an array. And that works just fine. Then if we wanted to run the unit test, we can move our working directory up to the R directory. And we can use the usual dev tools test. And it looks like the unit test crashed. You can see a terminal crash right here. And I just caught right before that it crashed on the dplyr join test. Thankfully, we have the tools to start looking at that. So we'll be looking at that with the debugger in just a minute. Before we do, I also want to point out the testing panel. Over here, another way to run the unit tests is with this testing panel. You'll see there's tests for R using test that. I mean, you can expand it and see there is a label for each file and each file also has a list of the tests inside. So you can run all of the unit tests, you could run the ones in just one file, or you could run an individual unit test using the play button on the right there. Green check marks means it's passing. And then of course there's this nice go to button on the right. So I noticed there was the file that said dplyr join that failed. So let's go ahead and look at that one and run it. And this will run all the tests in the file, but then it'll give us information about which ones pass. We notice that all of them passed, except for this last one, which doesn't really have a status. Usually that means that it must have crashed instead of failed. So now given that this is crashed, what we'd like to do is open this up in the debugger and see where it's crashing and try to determine what's going on in that situation. So this brings us to the last configuration file that we haven't talked about yet, and that is the launch.json. This file defines how to launch the GDB debugger and attach it to R, and it'll open it up in VS Code. One thing to note, in the program, this needs to point to your R installation. Right now it's just hard-coded to mine, which is a user-level install and specific to this version, so make sure you match that to the correct R version. This launch config is in attach mode. So what that means is that we're going to need to start up the R session, get our process ID, and then attach this debugger to that process. To attach our debugger to this test, what we're going to need to do is stick a breakpoint in there. We can do this by adding browser in with the code. And that sticks a breakpoint in R. I'm putting it right here above this section of code because it looks like this is where we've had segfaults before, and so that's probably where we're going to have a segfault again. So we're going to go ahead and save that, and let's open up a new R terminal, and we'll try to run this test. So we need to set our working directory to the R folder, and then we can do DevTools test, and we'll filter specifically for this join test file. That'll load it up, and once we reach our test, we'll hit this browse prompt. In this browser prompt, we can look at any variables in R. So if I wanted to look at the species codes data frame, I can print that out. And of course, any valid R expression can be run here. But to debug this, we're going to want to use sys.getPID, and that'll give us the process ID we need to find and attach to this process. To launch the debugger, we can either go into the run and debug panel and press this play button,
or we can use the shortcut and hit F5. Once we do that, it'll ask us for that process ID. So we'll just go ahead and type that in, 12040. And you'll see it'll say R term, and it'll point at that executable right there. It'll need a few seconds to load, but once it does, we're going to see the threads related to the C++ process in that call stack. So once you see that, that means that it is attached. Now to continue and get to the segfault, we can just type in C in our R terminal in this browse. And one thing we can notice is that when that happened, it launched a new thread, thread number 10. Thread number 9 is gone for some reason. That seems quite odd. And we're getting a segfault somewhere in this simd kernel. So the nice thing about this debugger, it'll show us the line where the segmentation fault happened, and then it'll give us the local variables in this context. And then down here, it'll show the call stack. The cool thing about this call stack is that we can jump around in it, including we can go up the call stack to see where these SIMD functions were called. It looks like we're in the parquet parser. It looks like we're in the column reader. Even more than that, we can also check these other threads. They are now paused, but we can look into them and we can go into some of their call stacks and see what they're up to. And any of these call stacks, you'll notice that the variables in the upper left will change and we'll be able to introspect them. You can see that the build is going pretty quick. That's because we installed Ccache and that I've already built it once before. So all of this is just cached compilation. However, once we get to the linking step, you'll see that it actually slows down quite a bit. This step, unfortunately, on Mingua takes about 10 or so minutes, depending on your system. This is unfortunately unavoidable in RTools 4.0 because this old of a compiler, its linker is just quite slow. One other note on the C++ build, we use Control shift b but we could have also hit the Build button in the CMake tab. So if you go to the CMake tab, there's a Build button right here. We could have hit that. They'll do the same thing. They'll both build the Arrow C++ project. So now I'd like to show you another example of using the debugger. This time we're gonna use one that's not on a segfault, but try to show stepping through a piece of code. Inside the array nested, I've set two breakpoints inside of set list data. One where we've set this data here and one towards the end of the function. And you'll notice that when we set these breakpoints, we see in our debugger panel that those breakpoints are now set. We could temporarily enable or disable them if we'd like. But for now, notice that there is a red dot, which means that VS Code for now knows where that is. So this code path is going to be run when we create uh, map arrays or list arrays. So we're going to look at this through a map array. Now there's, there's a lot of tests in this file. So we run this test with those breakpoints from the beginning. What's going to happen is we'll hit them over and over again, not just in the cases that we want. So what we're going to do instead is put a browser call in here and only attach the debugger and the breakpoints once we've reached this browser call. So like before, we open up an R terminal, we set our working directory to R, and now instead of doing the debugger attachment first, we're gonna first run the unit test to get to that browser step. So we've hit the browser step, so now we can get the process ID and attach. So sys.getPID, and we've got the process ID, we hit F5, and we type that process ID in, hit return and it'll start up our debugger. So notice we have our threads over here on the left, that means it's active, but you'll also notice that our breakpoints are now grayed out and have empty circles next to them. That means that they're not actually attached. So if we continued from here, it would skip right past our breakpoints. 
This is because of a limitation in VS Code's integration with GDB on Windows. The workaround to this is inside of our R terminal. We want to hit Control C. And what that'll do is it'll pause the debugger and give the debugger a chance to set those breakpoints. It's now they're red. And then this is now paused, so we can't type anything here. If we try to type C, it won't do anything. So what we need to do is hit continue. And now that C will appear and our threads are back to running again. So let's run it and we're gonna hit our breakpoint. So as usual, we can see our variables in the upper left, including just exploring nested, and we can just open up and click through. The other thing we can do is we can use the debug console to print things. So for example, if I wanted to print this value right here, we already know it's due, but say we didn't, or say we are getting a failing check and we wanna check what it actually is, we can always print that out. We can also set watches right here. So we've used the same expression, so actually we can paste that in. And we can see that's two. Another one we might want to look at is when is this list type being modified? So we can copy that and put that. And we see right now it's 0x0 zero zero in the null pointer. And let's, we can step through using this button or F10. So let's step through, still the null pointer. And now we can see that list type is now set after that line. And so that's mostly it for how you use the debugger. You can set breakpoints, you can set watches. The watches are especially helpful if you have functions that go in sort of iterations of, for example, it iterates through each column and you wanna be able to watch for when it hits the column that you care about. When you're done with the debugger, you can always exit out by detaching and it'll run the program through as normal. So that's it for this demo of the RTools 4.0 Windows dev environment. One last thing to note is that this is the RTools 4.0 and soon will be out with a new RTools, RTools 4.2, which has a slightly different setup. I hope to have a video on that when that comes out as well.